No matter who is the speaker, Judicial Watch will continue to take the lead because I think we'll have to be in the lead. First up is the historic fight now or historic battle as to who is going to be the Speaker of the House. Now, you recall in the elections in November, uh, the Republicans came in with a much smaller than expected majority. I think it's only five five or six votes. And conservatives in the uh, Republican caucus have, uh, are unhappy with Kevin McCarthy for uh, reasons that um, I won't bore you with, but you probably have been well educated on in the last several days, given the fight. And so as a result, Mr. McCarthy has been unable to get the majority necessary to become Speaker of the House. As of now, he's had 13 votes. They may get another vote tonight. I'm not sure. But either way, uh, the votes have been uh, strong against him in the term, in terms of having 20 individuals against him. Now, uh, there's been a bit of a deal. So there are about six individuals against him. And what I'm going to do is try to explain what the dispute is with uh, the members uh, that have opposed McCarthy to date. Now, a, a big group of members, the 13 or 14 who initially voted uh, against him, but have subsequently switched their votes, uh, their concern, um, and it's shared probably by the others as well, is that the speaker's office is too powerful. And this is something I think the left and the right, um, certainly those, if there's any honest folks in the Democratic Party there on the Hill, they would probably agree with me here as well, is that the Speaker's office in recent years has become too powerful. And uh, you, you kind of get this feel from the media. It's like, well, the House did this, the House did that. No, actually what happened is one member of the House, a Speaker of the House, uh, put forward a bill and under Pelosi and previously under um Congre uh, Speaker Ryan and Speaker Boehner uh, was able to push through legislation that they only wanted. And they kind of used party discipline and, and other methods to get the, the bills passed. So it wasn't this organic uh, approach to legislation that I think we all naively or many of us naively thought might be taking place on the Hill. If the Speaker didn't want it to happen, it didn't happen. If the speaker wanted it to happen, it did happen. That's the way things have run. And in a 435 person body that purports to represent the full breadth of the United States of America, obviously that isn't good because it leads to uh, essentially one person running one half of the legislative branch. And that's been the core dispute between uh, McCarthy and his people and, uh, and, and, and the 20 or so that have objected, uh, to, uh, his, uh, potential speakership. Now, supposedly McCarthy has come to a deal with some of those folks, uh, uh, folks who are all, you know, pretty much, you know, they're good conservatives who are supporting McCarthy now, even before this, uh, for some of these 20 came over. Uh, so some of these conservatives have come to a deal with McCarthy that require him to, uh, devolve power from the Speaker's office to the other members of the House. And it's hard to really object. I don't know how any sensible person could object to any of that. And so what will happen is that there'll be more opportunities for legislation to organically develop uh, from uh, members who could share our values, for instance, and uh, get onto the floor and get fully discussed. And I guess there's commitments that some, some of these issues uh, or some some legislation related to, for instance, the border and such, certainly will make it to the floor. And uh, on top of that, there's uh, discussions about what is called the Rules Committee. And the Rules Committee is a vehicle for uh, the speaker, typically, to control the legislation that gets to the floor. And the Rules Committee typically has been kind of like the Politburo of the speaker. Uh, just they're just avatars for the speaker. And I understand the conservatives have ensured that they'll have a more significant voice on the rules committee to ensure it's not just a bunch of establishment liberals and moderates in the Republican Party that are controlling the flow, direction and policy of the House of Representatives. So I don't know if McCarthy's going to win or lose because they're even with this so-called deal that's in place. Uh, there are still six members as of now who don't want him to be speaker. 
And they, I guess, they don't trust him, given his prior record, to implement any of this. One of the concerns I have, not only about McCarthy, but about the House generally, because I don't think it's going to be necessarily addressed, even if McCarthy isn't the speaker, is what's going to happen with investigations and accountability. And I've been advocating for a broad-based impeachment inquiry. So as part of this broad-based impeachment inquiry, it would be, it seemed to me, more efficient to kind of go through that process or use that inquiry as the umbrella to get information from the Biden administration. Uh, I think legally it's it's a more powerful way of ensuring compliance and politically it escalates the issue of accountability. And of course, uh, one other issue in terms of the internal operations of the House is that they should punish for abusive office those members of the House that were involved in the January 6th Rump Committee uh, that uh, abused their authority to harass American citizens for First Amendment protected freedoms, harass President Trump, release uh, private information on American citizens. I know I was targeted. Judicial Watch was targeted as well. And they shouldn't be allowed on any committees. They should be barred from committees. Similarly, members of the House Ways and Means Committee, the Democrats, who uh, for improper purposes sought and then released the confidential IRS tax returns of President Trump should be barred from the House Ways and Means Committee or any other committees. So if there's going to be abuse of power, there's got to be accountability. Now, I'm told McCarthy doesn't want to do anything like that and probably would never do anything like that. But And I suggest if you have views on these issues, you call your members of Congress uh, to let them know what you think, A, about the speaker's race and B, about how Congress proceeds in terms of accountability over the next two years. And the number you can call to get to your representatives is 202-225-3121. That's 202-225-3121. And uh, ask for your House member. And, you know, I hope you know who your House member is. You should look it up if you don't. Uh, Some of you may have new House members. So it's essentially, it's, it's, it's really important you call. And even if you're, even if your House member doesn't agree with you, even if your congressman is someone on the other side, and this goes for Democrats and Republicans, because I know Democrats are listening and they're thinking, well, I'm going to do what Fitton says. And I'm going to do everything opposite what he says. Well, that's fine. It's a great country. You can still do that. No thanks to, uh, the liberal left. Uh, but the fact is, uh, they do listen to the calls. Uh, and you may think you're get, you're treated shortly, you know, curtly, uh, or, uh, you're, you're not given enough time to share your views. No, nope. they, they generally figure out who's calling and what they're calling about and uh, what their views are. And they take note and calls are an effective way of communicating, uh, your views about, uh, the issues of the day, including what the house is going to do. And in terms of general house investigations, I would, I would think, uh, because I talked about impeachment, that, you know, we can't just have two years of investigations. Judicial Watch can do that, right? Send a letter out, and then in 10 months issue a subpoena, and then have a subpoena fight for months and months and months. Same things about, same thing about testimony. I think that, you know, a lot of the corruption we already knew took place, right? So what is there to investigate? I'm not saying there's nothing to investigate. But to me, it ought to be the penalty phase. That should be what the House focuses on. We know the FBI did this. We know the Justice Department did this. We know the border is being a, uh, uh, there's a border crisis because of a failure to enforce the law in a way that's contrary to law. And, and we're going to get some accountability, whether through impeachment or, uh, criminal referrals. However, uh, unlikely the Justice Department will pursue them, but you, you, you make it clear that there's an issue or, um, or defunding. Did I say defunding? I didn't say defunding yet. Uh, defunding the depart, the departments and the agencies. Uh, you can really have a great impact if, if you take that approach. And, uh, we can't wait two years for Congress to get its act together in terms of investigations. Uh, because what's going on is currently destroying the republic. 
between the border invasion, Biden's abuses of power to try to target and jail his political opposition, to censor his political opposition. We can't wait. And so Congress has got to get on the ball. And so those are the sorts of issues that I would want to raise with any new speaker or uh, the members of the House. And, and, you know, if you think that the corruption issues aren't being pursued adequately, you, you know, just don't complain about it. You have to call your members and let them know what your views are. And believe me, it has an impact. You know, and tell them Judicial Watch sent you. And they want, if they want to figure out what you're calling about, talk to Tom Fitton. They know who I am. They know who Judicial Watch is. They know exactly why you're calling, believe you me. So is Speaker McCarthy, excuse me, he's not Speaker. Uh, is McCarthy going to be the Speaker? I don't know. But I do know no matter who is the Speaker, Judicial Watch will continue to take the lead because I think we'll have to be in the lead given the likely um, haplessness of Congress on these corruption issues. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.